Today we're going to make a super simple rocket fuel and test it in one of our easy to build rocket motors. So the fuel we're going to make today is nothing new. It's been around for a very long time. It's typically called rocket candy or R candy for short. Now the mixture we're going to use today is very super simple. It's going to use potassium nitrate as the oxidizer and sugar as the fuel. And we're just going to be using plain white sugar. Now the case that we're going to be putting this in is our Super Monkey motor design. Now we've used this design several times with our other type of sugar fuel called Flex Fuel. Now Flex Fuel is potassium nitrate, powdered sugar, and corn syrup. We're not going to make any modifications to the casing. We're going to start off with the number 22 nozzle that we typically use with Flex Fuel and we'll see how that performs with Rocket Candy. Now today's video is really more about experimentation. We're not going to go into a lot of detail about making the fuel. We just need to get a functional motor using this fuel. So I mixed up a batch of the Rocket Candy fuel, poured it into the motor, and we're ready for a ground test. All right, we are out here today for our very first test of our Super Monkey motor with a number 22 nozzle hole and using Rocket Candy fuel. In fact, this is the very first time I have ever used Rocket Candy fuel in a rocket motor, so this will be an interesting test. Now, not only do we need to do this test to make sure that everything holds together and it doesn't blow up, but this will also be very interesting because I don't know the comparison between the burn rate of Rocket Candy versus the burn rate of flex fuel that we typically make. So if this does explode, that would indicate that Rocket Candy has a faster burn rate than flex fuel. So that'll be interesting information. Let's see how it does. Super Monkey 22 nozzle with Rocket Candy fuel in three, two, one. So I wish I could say I was surprised, but I'm really not. That motor was just blown into little bits. So that would seem to indicate that Rocket Candy has a faster burn rate than the flex fuel that we typically make. And I'm not really surprised because the cooking temperature that we used when making the Rocket Candy was significantly higher than the cooking temperature that we typically would use for the flex fuel. And when you heat sugars up to higher temperatures, the higher you go, your final product is going to be harder and denser, which seems to result in a faster burn rate. So the solution for this is to simply increase the nozzle size. It's just a matter of continually increasing the nozzle size until it doesn't blow up. But we don't want to increase it too far because each time you increase that nozzle size, you're going to reduce the overall pressure and the thrust that you're going to get from the motor. So this was a 22. We're going to try a number 23 nozzle and see how that works. We are here again today with an identical motor, except this time this has a number 23 nozzle. So that is 23 60 fourths of an inch diameter. Now you might think just that one change in nozzle size isn't much, but if you do the math out, the area of a 23 60 fourths diameter circle is 9% larger than the area of a 22 60 fourths diameter circle. So just by going up that one simple size, we've now provided almost 10% more space for the exhaust gases to get out. Now, will that stop this from exploding? Let's go find out. Super Monkey motor with number 23 nozzle and rocket candy fuel in three, two, one. Now that we had a successful ground test, we decided to move on to a flight test. Alright, so that was terribly disappointing. The flight computer and the parachute are both fine, but the rest of the rocket is a complete loss. So for those of you interested in a technical analysis, I have four ideas of what might have gone wrong with that. 
So first off, the number 23 nozzle may just be right on the edge of what this case can handle with Rocket Candy fuel. So if you're right at that edge of capability, sometimes it might explode, sometimes it might not. So that would explain why the ground test was fine, but the launch was not. Now another possibility is that the fuel was cracked. It could have cracked as it cooled because that is cooked to a very high temperature and cooling and shrinking could have resulted in some cracking. It could have also cracked right at ignition because of the extreme heat and pressure causing cracks to form in the fuel. All those cracks would start burning which would create a tremendous increase in pressure and definitely explode the motor. Another possibility is that the fuel shrunk while it was cooling. So if we have the outer PVC casing and we pour the fuel inside and then the fuel shrinks, then there'll be a gap between the fuel and the PVC case. So when the motor ignites, not only are we going to be burning the center core, but the flame will try to wrap around and burn the outside edge of the fuel cell as well, which would cause a massive increase in pressure and definitely explode the motor. A fourth possibility is that the igniter did not eject from the motor properly. Now the type of igniter we use has a small metal tip on it and if that got jammed up in the orifice as it tried to come out it would have caused a partial obstruction of the nozzle and that would definitely cause the motor to explode. Unfortunately, I don't think in this situation we're ever going to know what caused that motor to explode. And that makes it a little difficult to move forward with the development of this project. So I really have three options of where to go from here. Number one, completely scrap the project. Well, I don't really want to do that because I've got a lot of time invested in this and it would really make the destruction of this rocket a complete waste as well. Number two is test and rebuild. So we continue testing the Super Monkey casing with Rocket Candy Fuel, which probably would include increasing the nozzle size to a number 24, and then completely rebuilding the rocket that was destroyed. Well, I kind of don't want to do that because I wasn't planning on building a new rocket right at the moment. Option three is to change the design of the project, and that's what we're going to do. So the only reason I was using the Super Monkey casing for this project is because this is the motor that we use to launch our 4-inch rockets. And for the last few months, all the projects we've been doing have been using our 3-inch rocket. I just thought it would be a neat idea to launch the 4-inch rocket for a change. So we have a smaller motor design called our Dart Monkey. It's identical to the Super Monkey, but clearly just a little bit shorter. This motor has been very dependable for us, and that motor is specifically designed to launch our 3-inch Assassin rockets. So that's what we're going to change the project to. So I'm going to make a Dart Monkey motor. We're going to load it with the Rocket Candy fuel. Now the Dart Monkey motor uses a number 19 nozzle when we make it with the flex fuel. Again, we're not going to change anything about this motor. We're going to stay with the default 19 nozzle, and we'll go out and do a ground test on this with Rocket Candy. Let's see how it goes. Dart Monkey motor with number 19 nozzle and rocket candy fuel. In three, two, one. So just like the previous motor, this one exploded when we used the default nozzle size that we use when we make it with flex fuel. Still kind of leans towards the fact that possibly Rocket Candy has a faster burn rate than flex fuel and we simply need a larger nozzle to reduce that internal pressure. So we'll go from a number 19 to a number 20 nozzle and we'll test this motor again. Dart Monkey motor number 20 nozzle with Rocket Candy fuel. Three, two, one. Well, that was unfortunate. I really expected that one to work. But let's increase that nozzle size again and try it with a number 21 nozzle. Three, two, one. That went really well. But you remember the larger motor we were testing went really well on the ground test and then it blew our rocket to pieces. So. Just to be a little bit more confident, I'm going to make one more of these motors exactly like this with the number 21 nozzle. We'll ground test it one more time. Number 21 nozzle, test number two in three, two, one. Wow. 
When we went out there that day for the second ground test, I actually had two motors with me, both identical with the number 21 nozzle. One was for the second ground test and one was supposed to be for launching the rocket. But since the ground test didn't go well, I wasn't willing to risk another rocket for this experiment. And since the brackets on the test stand were blown to pieces by the explosion, we didn't have anything to do with the second motor. So we decided just to have some fun and ignite it on the ground. Here's what happened. All right, so there's some times where we have a project where we need to decide whether we're gonna keep fighting it and pursuing it, or if it's best just to quit. And I think with this particular one, we've had enough failures that we're just gonna call it quits on this project. That fuel in that motor, it's just not working out as a good combination. Yeah, we could keep increasing the nozzle size, but we're just gonna keep losing thrust. And if it's another issue like fuel cracking, um, we're never gonna solve that problem because it's always gonna be random and we're never gonna get a consistent motor. So clearly I'm not willing to put that into another rocket and destroy another rocket just to try and test an obsolete style fuel. So I think this is an instance where we're fighting the PVC casing and the strengths of that casing, or more specifically, the weakness of that casing. If we were using a metal case, it's a lot stronger. Even if the fuel was a little bit erratic or even cracking, it probably could deal with those pressure changes, but the PVC just can't do that. And we do have a really nice metal motor casing that we use, and maybe in the future we'll come back to this fuel for a test and try it in the metal case and see how that goes. But for right now, I think the project with the PVC PVC case is finished. If you're not subscribed to the channel, consider hitting that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that like button. We really appreciate it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.